Um, I can start with a quick introduction as everyone else is rolling in. So thank you so much to everyone that is joining us for our Rising Together class today. My name is Sam and I work on the marketing team. Valerie, unfortunately, is unable to host today. She had a family obligation, but I'll be your host today and I'll be managing all the technical aspects of Zoom. We're so excited to have Ariel teaching a posterior chain awakening yoga class. Her donation link, I'm gonna throw in the chat below and I'm sure she'll speak more to that in a few moments. But before that, I wanted to invite you all to join us again next week for Warrior Ambassador Marie Bell's full body mobility flow. So thank you so much for practicing with us today and anyone joining us for the first time today. I'll be managing muting everyone besides Ariel. So if you have any technical issues, just let me know in the chat. And with that, I'll hand it off to Ariel. Thank you so much for leading us. I'm gonna spotlight your video and add in two more people. Excellent. So I'm gonna put my um, earbuds in and, and also go live on the, on the uh, Instagram, hopefully. Sounds good. Checking connection. Live. Okay, I'll be right back on the screen. No worries. Okay, welcome everybody. This practice today is called posterior chain awakening. And it is about <clears throat> essentially a strength practice under the umbrella of the principles of yoga. And as you can see, it's sponsored by Cure Grace. So thank you so much for being here and dedicating your time to this practice this morning. My name is Ariel. I am a doctor of physical therapy. I have taught yoga since the year 2001, and I've studied many different lineages. But my job today, these days, is really to merge what I know from physical therapy with the yoga. And so I, I I sometimes feel a little self-conscious because I know that whatever I'm teaching is very different from what happens in a lot of yoga classes out there. Um, but nonetheless, I'm excited to teach and I hope you are excited to be here. So this will be a class that is strength-based, but also therapeutic at the same time. And I will do my best to offer modifications. I won't be able to monitor the chats, but if you have um, any questions, I'll, be, I'll do my best to answer them after our practice together. Um, let's settle in to also honor the symbolism of today. Today is June 19th, also known as Juneteenth. And this is a celebration of emancipation and liberation, which by the way, is a very potent thread in the yoga philosophy as well. And Juneteenth recognizes that we have to liberate all beings everywhere in order for any of us to be truly free. Juneteenth uh, became a US national holiday, federal holiday, just two days ago. And it, it started in Texas where the people of Texas, the people who were enslaved in Texas found out about their liberation two years after, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. A fun fact that not everybody knows, I live in Washington, D.C. That's not the fact. The fun fact is that in Washington, D.C. and sometimes in other places, we celebrate a different day called Emancipation Day, and that's in April. And so there have always been celebrations of Juneteenth, of Emancipation Day, of, um, of the liberation of enslaved people in the United States. And it's um, uh, um, let's say it's a, a mixed celebration, right? It's not exactly always entirely something to celebrate, but it is something to honor and to understand about our, our home, our lineage and, and our communities. So we give honor to that, um, to that national holiday. I am 
not just a doctor of physical therapy, I'm also the founder of Yoga Anatomy Academy. And I have um, weekly classes online and I teach, um, I teach a number of online courses. I'm known for teaching about fascia release and about just general strengthening and kind of no nonsense, looking at the facts, looking at the research and kind of deciphering some of the maybe even more woo-woo cues from yoga and making them um, rooted in reality. Our charity today, if you feel like donating, is called the Heal Food Alliance. And the executive director is a dear friend of mine, Navina Khanna. Heal Food Alliance uh, basically supports black and brown farmers and farm workers and, and is working towards a deep liberation and freedom of the people who bring us food. I like food. <laughs> I think probably most of us participating today like food. And so I really encourage you to check out Heal Food Alliance. Um, at the end of this practice, I'm gonna put their, um, their handles, social media handles, and you can find out more about them and donate if you feel so moved. Any amount can be helpful. So, Take a comfortable seat, grab a block or two blocks. If you happen to have a chair that you could use and maybe also a blanket, that would be great. And if you're at home and you don't necessarily have all of these things, it's gonna be fine as well. You can grab um, maybe a few throw pillows and a towel. And if you have the edge of a bed or a couch nearby, you can use that for the stuff we'll be using the chair for. What distinguishes this from just a calisthenics practice, of course, is the, the quality of mindfulness and the, the presence we bring to it. So feel your right sitting bone, feel your left sitting bone rooted to the ground. Invite your breath to expand three-dimensionally, front, back, side, side, top, down. There's no need to force yourself to lift or to backbend or squeeze your shoulders or do any of that. Just invite um, a stacking. Ears back, chin down. Can we slow down? Can we? Drop in. I just use this time to notice. Please place one hand over your heart other hand over your heart, breathing into an awareness that many of our, the liberties that, that we probably share and experience and relish are not shared equally around the world. Our commitment to our yoga has to encompass all to yoke. Commit to that with this next breath, full breath in. Feel free to ohm out if that's in your practice or with pursed lips, exhale. Bottom of your breath, settle your hands, crack open your eyes and let's clear off the yoga mat. So the chair will come in handy later if you have that. And we are going to just have a block or two within arm's reach. When we talk about posterior chain or posterior chain, as, as Sam said earlier, we notice that um, we, the first thing we think of, right, is our glutes and our bum. And it's a lot more than that, but this is a part of it, right? So we're gonna to start to differentiate 
engagement of the glutes versus engagement of the back. We'll do a little here versus a little on our back, okay? So having your hands to the top of your front hip points, start to flatten, feel your tailbone rise up a little bit, and then find neutral. Flatten the back, feeling the tailbone rise up a little bit more, and then find neutral. And this is going to ultimately bring us into a bridge. So lift up just a little bit more, and then a little bit more from there. Moving into a low segmental bridge or rolling bridge, as I sometimes call it. So you can feel yourself segment by segment dropping down back to the ground. Rise it up and drop it down. Aim to get every inch, every vertebra of in front of your spine rising. And We'll do one more of these. Root through your big toe, ball mound. Rise it up. Hug the thighs in a little bit. Connect to breath. And then as you lower down, wiggle your feet together and draw one leg into your chest. So you're going to play with a couple different options here. Press this thigh forward into your hands. So this is also activating glutes and hamstrings, right? So part of our posterior chain. Breath into the back body and go ahead and lift and lower. And if lifting and lowering is not in the cards for you today, then you can kind of pump, work your arms and your legs. For the rest of us, we're gonna do at least five of these. Keep the tension between the arms and the leg that is lifted, and then release. Open your feet wide from one another, and just drift your knees side to side as far as feels comfortable. We'll come back through to center. Other side, hook the hands behind the thigh. Push forward, activating your hamstrings and glutes on the second leg. Make sure that the foot that's still on the floor is relatively central so that you can get that power to lift up. And if that's, again, not in the cards, then you get to push a little bit forward and back, keeping that tension on. For the rest of us, two, three, four, five, Settling down, you may notice in your own body whether one side was more difficult than the other. And kind of maybe even take a little bit of a note with that and add it to something that you might do on a daily basis or a few, few times a week, just to see if you can even it out a little bit more. We're gonna slide one hand under the low back. One hand stays on the abdomen. Rise up from the tailbone. And I want you to start to, to tell, like after a certain point in the bridge, your low back muscles have to be engaged in pushing you forward. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's part of your posterior chain, in fact. But I want you to notice the point at which they activate so that you can consciously decide whether your bridge is going to be a bridge that involves your glutes, that focuses effort in your glutes and your hamstrings, or or your legs in general, because you'll always feel them in the quads, or if you want to get your back muscles involved. And for many of us, I think from the yoga tradition, we have done too much of non-engagement of our glutes and hamstrings and a little maybe not too much, but like relatively unbalanced engagement of the low back muscles. Stretch everything out. And then roll yourself over, belly down. And we're gonna rise up through the chest. Speaking of back muscles, you'll be feeling them here. Arms rise up, squeezing the muscles, shoulder blades down the back is actually an appropriate one for now. And then lift your legs and lower. Shake everything out. You can bend your knees and swish your feet side to side here. 
hip rotation strength is one of the best things that you can do for your body. And it's what I teach every week in my hips class. Reach the legs long and then place one hand on your low back. And just lift one leg off the floor. Notice when the effort is concentrated in the glutes and in the leg or when the effort starts to feel like it's a little bit more in the low back, just something to be aware of. Lower down, raise your other leg off the floor. And a funny thing that you may play with, I'm gonna keep my head turned to you, but you may also turn your head to the other side and notice how that changes the engagement of the muscles of your back body. First leg, second leg. You can also put your hands on your glutes and just make sure that they are kicking in. I'm almost certain that they are. And then as you lift both legs, lift your chest, sweep the arms by your side for a classical Shalabhasana. Invite a couple breaths here, even into the back body. Imagine you could lengthen and reach And then go ahead and give yourself a little bit of a rest with your right leg. Bring the heel in to kick your butt a few times. You can look over your right shoulder as this is happening. And then same thing on the left. It doesn't matter if your toe is pointed or foot is flat. Just waking up your hamstring muscles. Bring both heels in as close as you can. Lift the chest, sweep the arms back. See if you can lift the knees and press the heels together, almost like a bow pose, but without using your arms. I know mine doesn't look like much, <laughs> but that's okay. Just whatever yours looks like, that's where it is. That's your active range of motion as opposed to passive range of motion. Root your hands. Just come onto hands and knees. Shake everything out. Move through a few rounds of cat and cow. And I like to do what might be considered some reverse breathing here. So breathing in into my back body as I round up. Exhale, belly down. Moving at your own pace, connecting to the front and the back of the body. Feel free to also go a little side to side. Move organically in whatever way feels good to you. And your fingers may turn out a little bit here. By the way, I've heard a lot of teachers over the years talk about first or middle finger pointing forward. I think for the bony structure of most of our wrists, turning your fingers out probably feels better. And if it doesn't feel like great in the wrist to have the hands right under the shoulders, walk them forward a little. That's also, this is also a little cruel to our anatomy to try to get it super geometric. So walk your hands a little forward if you need to, and then Curl your toes under. Try to spread all 10 toes out. This is a really, really important. Toe mobility is a really important part of maintaining our overall leg health, calf health, hips health, everything's related. And just rock a little front to back. This is um, a nourishing movement for the hips and the back for most of us. As you come back through to center, draw your knees a little closer to one another. Reach one leg back, lift up that leg, and then lower the toe to tap the floor and lift. Lower and lift. If you feel comfortable, so my right leg is up, I'm going to bring my opposite hand, left hand to the abdomen or to the low back, and I'm trying to keep the torso as neutral as possible, right? Not neutral would be this. You see it all the time on Instagram. <laughs> We're going to do quite a few of these. The last time you lift up, we'll call that one the last one. We're going to do little tiny circles. This is where it comes in handy even more to have the tactile feedback on your back. It doesn't make sense for you to have all that weight on one arm. You could put your block on your back and draw this circle here and then if the block doesn't fall, you're probably doing pretty good, keeping neutral. Settle the knee. Shake it out, settle the hands too. Do anything that would feel good to you. 
and we've got another side. Happen to have two blocks and a little bit of wrist fatigue. Feel free to put your hands on the blocks, medium height, catch the edges of the block. Other leg, and we're gonna lift and tap. Opposite hand to abdomen. Feeling that posterior chain now, yeah? And as you lift this time, keep it lifted. We're gonna do little tiny circles. Hands to the abdomen or to the low back. And go ahead and lower your hands, lower your knee and just rock all the way back towards child's pose. If you have any props you want to use here to make child's pose more comfortable for you, go for it. You can absolutely grab those. I am going to encourage you to put your block under your forehead and to let your knees go a little bit wide. So what we're going to experiment with might be a bit humbling, okay? And it's humbling for me as well, so I just want you to know that. We are going to start with the arms in a relatively narrow V shape really reach one arm and then try and lift it up off the floor. So if we were doing this inside of table pose, you could probably move a lot further into the movement, but inside of this version, it's a smaller movement and it's definitely more of a struggle, right? So if your arm does not get up off the floor with the child's from child's pose then just come back to table and you'll be doing the same exact thing except your end range is different than mine no shame in that right so wherever you are we'll call this four five invite a reaching there's no need here to bring your shoulder blade down your back when the arms are overhead you absolutely want your shoulder blades to move with the arm and then this last time you lift it up start to open it out to the side and right back. You can do this in table or in child's pose. Aim for the thumb to be up the whole time. And the arms to really, really be reaching both to the side and forward. Settle down. That was a bit of a burn for me. Connect a breath, other side. Lift and lower. One of the next times you lift up, <laughs> you might notice a difference as I did between your right and your left just now. The next times you, you lift up, you can start to open to the side and right back to center. Keep the thumb pointed up here. Keep the reach active. Good. And one more time all the way to the side, all the way to the front. Shift yourself right back onto hands and knees. Giving the arms a rest from that movement for a moment. Raise one leg as high as you can behind you. Lift your chest, feel your back body muscles kick in, and then raise the opposite arm. So make almost like a very wide U shape. Lower, shake, sweep, lift, Lovely crescent moon, lower, reach, sweep, lift. Working the diagonals is a nice, powerful way to move with our body. And then as you settle down, pivot on your left knee. You're going to make a bit of a tripod between your left hand, your left knee, and your left foot. Come onto the fingertips of your right hand and reach your right leg back. So go ahead and draw your abdomen here. The last movement, we really let everything fly out, but for this one, we're going to stay a bit more stable. From that pouring the weight into the left side, <laughs> there are the words, lift your right leg 
and then start to maybe lift your right hand off the floor. Reach that right arm forward and long by the ear. Active, active reach, spreading the toes, spreading the fingers. Staying connected and strong. Gaze can be downward. Again, hand can be on the block if this is a lot on your wrist. Slowly lower, lower, lower and shake things out. Other side, pivot, reach. Fingertips, left hand fingertips now. Again, uh, the hand that is bearing the weight can go a little in front of your shoulder if you have any wrist things. So go ahead and lift this up, make it energized like you're about to kick the door back through. Scoop through the belly, especially these lowest ribs, draw them up like there's a magnet towards the ceiling and then opposite arm reaches. Draw the ribs in, float the leg. Notice that your standing leg is also working strongly here. And then lower and lower and rock back. Rise onto your fingertips, shake it out a little bit. Let's find our way to downward facing dog. Knowing full well that our hamstrings or calves probably not very warmed up, that's okay. Shake it out here and if you're someone who down dog feels like a perpetual overhead push-up, hands to the blocks. Just creates that little bit of extra shift of your weight back towards your legs when your mobility doesn't allow you to do that so much. Let's walk the hands all the way back towards the feet. Take a little bend here and shake everything out. So, I have two little nuggets of information that I hope will stick with you well beyond this practice today. And the first one is that one of the best ways to improve your range of motion, any part of your body that feels tight or stiff is contrary to what many of us grew up thinking. And it's actually to strengthen that muscle. That includes even these muscles at the upper, the, the upper trapezius muscles at the neck and shoulder where they meet. Strengthening that can often improve that feeling of tightness that's there in a lot of us. The second nugget of information is dynamic movements are also a lot better for our nervous systems and have more permanent um, long-term range of motion benefits than static stretching. So rather than just taking my legs and crack, pressing them back like that, we're gonna get into our hamstrings by dropping the elbows down onto the knees or the hands keeping your spine relatively straight, right? So the angle of the hip, the thigh bone to the spine isn't really gonna matter. But you're getting your upper hamstrings nice and lengthened. Mm -hmm. And then inhale, halfway up. Exhale, bend down, shake it out. And inhale, rise it up, big toes root into the ground, sweep the arms, palms together over the heart. Please bring your hands to your hips, press the pelvis forward. And instead of doing it in a, I say a dumpy way, <laughs> we're going to do it from the muscles, right? So squeeze, press, squeeze your shoulder blades. Yes, get this like active shalambasana feeling here in standing. Heart is lifting and then return to normal. Building off of some of our hamstring lengthening, but also our back body awakening, you're going to want your one or two blocks towards the front of your mat in the tall position. And let's all shift onto our left leg first. Lean into that left leg by pushing off with your right toes. And you really want to feel your calf almost start to burn here, like you've got that highest possible stiletto on. You want to feel your glutes kick in and engage here. Squeeze your shoulder blades back, right? Nice straight line, more or less, from the back toe through the crown of the head. And then start to bend into your standing knee. Feel the outer glutes on this leg. Drop your hands maybe to the blocks and lift your back leg. Same thing we did in 
table. Back leg lifts and lowers. Notice that my standing leg is pretty deeply bent. It's basically the squat. <laughs> and I won't torture you for too long here. Let's just do one or two more playful kicks. Try to hold it up, squeeze your shoulders, float your chest, titanic arms. Slowly rise back up. Shake everything out. If you've got something to hold on to, like a wall, that would be of great benefit for you in this moment. And uh, uh, one more nugget of information as we go along. Place your hands on your glutes. And I want you to notice what happens in your glutes when your toes pull up. So this is called dorsiflexion. Toes are lifting up the angle of your ankle got closer to what it looks like in down dog and then rise onto your tiptoes high as you can go the hand is palpating what the muscle is doing and most of us are going to notice that you hopefully are getting more gluteus contraction when your calves are involved muscularly so rise up onto your tiptoes, consciously squeeze your glutes if you don't already feel that gluteus contraction there, and then go ahead and settle down. And the idea there is that if you don't, as you're walking, get good calf push off, you're not going to get good glute engagement, right? So if I just kind of swing my legs forward as, as I walk, there's not going to be a lot of gluteus engagement. But if I apply that principle to my power walks or whatever it is, my neighborhood walks, then I'll be awakening the posterior chain more often throughout the day. Set your blocks up again if yours fell over like mine did. And right foot in the middle of your mat, rise onto your left tiptoes. Stiletto style, engage the left glutes, squeeze your shoulder blades back. Take a breath or two here. And we're gonna bend into the right leg, shift the weight forward, shift into our warrior three variation and lengthen or rather lift and lower the lifted leg. So for years, I always thought that you know, Warrior Three was this really hard shape, hard to control in that end range, and it and it is, but you can make it nicer and more strength based by keeping a little bend in your standing leg and doing this dynamic range of motion. Last one, keep it lifted, keep your knee bent, squeeze your shoulder blades back. You're almost aiming for shell and basana, so even if you end up in a straight line, that's okay here. One arm. Then the other, and then very slowly rise right back up. Not an easy shape to hold. Step it back to the back of the mat, shake it out, do anything that feels good to you. And we're gonna wiggle to a part of the mat with the feet nice and wide apart, however wide feels good. And we're gonna engage our hamstrings a little bit. So this one's a tiny bit weird because you can do it in a few different ways and you have to kind of know yourself. If you're somebody whose legs have never been straight when you touched the floor, you're gonna to need to start with a big old bend here. If you're somebody who can palm the floor with your legs straight, you're welcome to keep your knees straighter. I'm gonna have mine a little bit in an in-between place, okay? What we're gonna do, butt back, lean forward, slowly come into Ardha Utkatasana, that's our halfway up shape, and then rise up. Make your body into that shelf bracket and rise up. One hand to the belly, one hand to the chest. The hand on your belly could be on your low back or it could even be on your glutes, okay? So the way that I'm practicing this right now is more legs, a little bit of back, but it's mostly concentrated below the waist. If I were to back bend, 
and really focus on almost lowering my back here sort of from a, a back bend more to a rounded spine and the lift back up. Then I would be engaging my spinal musculature. So you can do, let's do two more with the spine neutral. And then we're gonna do that one that I just showed you. So knees bent, spine neutral. Ut Arda Ut Katasana. I think I'm, I, I'm um, messing that one up. It's Uttanasana. Utkatasana is just so much more fun to say. So now we're going to bend the knees, take the hips back, lift the chest, exaggerate, activate all of those spinal muscles, and then lower yourself from that back bend to neutral, maybe even a little bit rounded, and then rise up with your heart. Lower, neutral, a little bit rounded. Rise it up. Yes. This is some posterior chain work, right? You feel it. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, add one arm, add the other. And that's the arm reaching forward, thumbs up. As you go up, the arm reaches with you, adds to the length of the lever arm, basic biomechanics here. And then last one each side, because my muscles are getting a little tired here. Yes, lower, lower, lower back down to table pose. And if you'd like, go ahead and take a vinyasa. Instead of your arm-based back bend, I recommend locust pose rather than cobra or up dog. And then option to do downward facing dog or child's pose. And if you do child's pose, have the toes curled under. Good, lower down to your knees. Gather whatever it is that you have that is chair-like. So if you don't have a chair, you can use your two blocks kind of to prop your heels up on. In fact, let's all start with that. So you're gonna have a block or two in the lowest position. You're gonna lay down on your back just like we did in the very beginning of our practice. And this time, start with the knees bent, obviously, and the heels digging in to the tops of the blocks. So you're going to put your hands, if you can reach at the bottom of your thighs, activating your, your hamstrings, and raise your hips and lower down. If you get any kind of cramping, just a, a good pressure to the middle of the hamstrings should help, OK? Because this might be pretty new activation for you. Adjust your angle. Also, if you got cramping, make the angle of the knees more like 90 degrees, and you're going to rise up, squeeze everything back there, drag the heels towards your head, and then lower down. Dig, dig, squeeze, squeeze, rise, rise, and lower down. Dig, dig, Squeeze, squeeze, rise, rise, and then lower down. So feeling some hamstrings, huh? So if anybody is feeling like a little bit, um, you want to turn the volume up a bit, you're welcome to. I recommend at your own, at your, at your own risk, you can do this with one leg, right? So really drive that one heel down as the other leg lifts. Single leg bridges and single leg bridge variations are so incredible for building gluteal stability. And they also have good transfer over to things like running or hiking or lunging, right? So now that you've got your single leg in on both sides, let's snuggle, I just need one block for this. The block a little closer in, soles of the feet together and then just for a moment, butterfly your legs open and closed. And then as they go open, soles of the feet press together like they're clapping. And you're going to press down, lift up into what I call a butterfly bridge. Shake it out a little bit and come on down. Squeeze. 
press and slowly lower. If you have like a heavy cat or a small dog, <laughs> a pet at home or a small child, you could place this child on your pelvis and see if you can still lift and lower. That's the gym equivalent of yoga movements. And of course, the traditional weight would be fine as well. Keep the knees level, lift it up, hold it up. Pause and breathe. And do little pulses here if you'd like. Try to keep the pelvis level on the down and the up. This works our external rotators or external rotating shape of the hips. And that's an important piece of training, to be quite honest, that we don't get to very often in yoga mat. Okay, go ahead and lower down, let's slide the blocks out of the way. Widen the space between your knees, your feet, and drift your knees to one side and to the other. Just shake it out actually in any way that would feel good to you. Okay, now you're gonna straighten out your legs, calves or heels on the block. Yeah, probably calves on the block for starters. You're not gonna go up very high with this one, but experiment with how high you can go. <laughs> I'm gonna try the medium height of the block. And active strong body reverse plank up. Hold it. I can barely slide my hands underneath my bum here, but this is what I'm asking you to do. And then lower down, shake it out a little bit. If you really felt that in your low back, then you might wanna, um, might wanna go to a higher surface actually. And that is where our chair comes in. If you don't have a chair, edge of a bed or a couch nearby you, feel free to keep using these blocks. And doing any of the bridge variations that we've done so far. My chair is hard and wooden, so I am going to bring this blanket up. All right, so same thing here. Legs are on the blanket, calves are on the blanket, and we're gonna lift, come into that reverse plank, and just give it a nice long hold. Breathe into the back body. Make sure that as you're breathing, as you're holding it, you're not drifting down towards the floor. Keep it up. <laughs> Spread your toes, wiggle them out. go ahead and lower down. Okay, you can do that same exact thing again, or if you feel comfortable and feel free to get a little closer to the chair, you can um, cross one leg over the other, push down, lift up, and this is a little closer to like a one leg straight leg bridge, right? It's not quite one leg since both legs are still working, but it's a nice warm up for the one leg straight leg version. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do five of these on this side and five on the other side. To be honest, the chair is really digging into my calf. So I'm just gonna pretend that it's um, a massage with stronger intensity than I prefer. <laughs> Last one, go ahead and lower and switch sides and cross active feet. Drop the ribs, float the pelvis and lower down. Rise and lower. My chair is sliding. <laughs> this is, chances are, if your primary movement modality is yoga, this is gonna feel like a lot for you. And do hang out with this level if that's a good challenge for you. The most important thing I think with movement is that we bring the mindfulness of our yoga practice into whatever movements we do. Otherwise, again, it's just calisthenics. So coming back to that first side, if you feel comfortable, draw one leg into your chest. Let's see how this works out for me. You're gonna drive it up and down, and up and 
down. If you feel like you might be using your arms a lot, cross your arms over your chest. Not too many. This is my fifth. I'm gonna give it a little hold for a moment. Lower down, pay attention to if you really end up bending your knee a lot here. You might be a bit hamstring heavy. You might wanna train your glutes a bit more. And same thing, we'll pay attention to that on the other side. I have to move my chair because it slid. And only progress to this one if you felt really comfortable with the ankle of your knee and you felt like it was relatively easy. You could certainly have a conversation while you're doing it, right? So now, other side. Arms across the chest. You can add that little bit of explosive quality to if you like, kind of a quick up and a slow control down. This is my fifth one, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a hold at the end. And then come on down, hug your knees into your chest, rock a little side to side. Chair snuggles closer to you or you snuggle closer to the chair. Bring your knees to 90 degrees. And you're going to drive your heels down, lift it up and lower. Drive, lift, and lower. And so now heels together. Drive, lift, find your butterfly shape and lower. Depending on your chair, you might have a little challenge coming into some of these, these shapes. It might be a different angle, but we're getting a bit more hamstrings here. Hopefully you can feel that behind the knee. And I won't wear you out too much with all this stuff. Just wanted to give you the full shebang. Last one, lower down and draw your knees to your chest. Open your knees out towards the sides. Give your inner thighs a little bit of a rest. This is malasana on our backs, right? Start to circle your ankles. Go ahead and roll to one side. Come on up and maybe catch a hold of the back of the chair or your wall. And we'll be working on heel raises. So my chair is a little bit low for this. Rise onto your tiptoes, noticing how high the feet get, the heels get. Shift your weight onto one leg, other leg is gonna be up in the air. And I want you to not have the legs touch except like at the thigh, right? So nothing's resting on the other leg. Rise onto your tiptoes. So make sure to go just as high as you were before. And we're gonna do 10 of these. So remember calf feeds into glutes. Calf is part of our posterior chain. Big toe pushing down into the floor, part of our posterior chain. If 10 single leg heel raises make you tired, that's something that's absolutely worth working on outside of the context of this practice. So please write that down as a little homework for yourself and keep playing with it. I feel like how I'm, I'm like, even outside of the physical therapy clinic, I'm assigning physical therapy exercises. <laughs> Other leg, rise as high as you can. So in an ideal setting, like with, uh, particularly with an athlete or somebody young, I'm gonna want them to do 20 heel raises on one leg before they get too burned out to go further. And if you're an athlete, you should really be able to do like 50 of these if you have a strong athletic practice or you're a runner. Okay, so don't wear yourself out too much in my practice though. Roll to the tops of your toes and then walk your legs back kind of from the wall, the chair, whatever you got. Dynamic hamstring lengthening. And then go ahead and bend your knees, trying to keep the heels down so that you get a little bit more, just a little bit more um, 
mobility in your ankle. As your knees shift forward, let them go past your toes and let them go a little bit out to the sides. And then hold on to the back of the chair. Feet are gonna be shoulder distance or a little bit wider. Drop down as low as you can towards your malasana. And then rise right back up and kind of plank it forward a little bit. Squeeze your glutes. Drop down a little bit towards your malasana. Doesn't really matter how far you, down you go. Your squat might look like above 90 degrees and that's okay. Raise your tiptoes if your calves are the tightest part of you. This is a technique called contract, relax, and the calves have to relax a bit as you drop down below 90 degrees. And then last one, up, drop it down. Maybe go hands-free. From here, you can do a couple different things. Option one, hands to the floor, raise and lower a few times. That gets your hamstrings just mobilized and doesn't put too much stress on the body. Option two, if you're feeling robust, you can rise all the way up and down a few times. And then option three, just rest and hang out in Malasana, which is where we're all gonna end up. Gather your blocks if you need them. Gather your blanket under your heels if you need it. Lower yourself all the way down. Sweep one, the back of one arm into the inside of one leg, other arm opens back and gives those shoulder blade attachments, something to talk about, little pulses around the clock. Pretend you have a helium balloon in your hand. Yes, other side. Actually, I have to get in neutral, take a full breath. And then other side, arm reaches, invite your imagination into the holding that helium balloon, do your little pulses here. This practice is about having freedom in our bodies, freedom to continue moving in well into our advanced years to defy stereotype, which in many ways doesn't have that much basis in reality, stereotype about aging, and to play, and to be strong. Last little arc of pulsation, both hands come down. If you're on the block, go ahead and Set the block off to the side. You are going to perhaps either go into legs up the wall or legs up the chair. I'm gonna do legs up the chair. And before we do either of those, we have done some back bending, done some forward folding. We have done a little bit of side bending, not too much, but when we're on our side activating that unilateral stuff, we got a bit of that. We're gonna close out with a gentle twist because I think that's been missing from the practice with the exception of that last move we did in Malasana. So setting yourself up already to be comfortable in whatever your Shavasana is gonna be, lower yourself down onto the ground. Please draw your knees into your chest and rock a little side to side. And then drop your knees to one side, looking out the other, off the other shoulder, past the other hand. Maybe take one more breath here. Moving through center. Other side and spinning your head.
And then coming back through to center, set yourself up in your Shavasana. So if you want my suggestion, I would put your calves on the seat of the chair that you are using. Make sure that they're supported so it doesn't work too well if the chair is too high or too low. This is known as waterfall in restorative yoga with Judith Lasser. Keep the back of the neck long, elbows heavy, palms down on the belly. Allow your breath to be easy and soft. Any thoughts that arise can float by like clouds in the sky, like fish in the stream. Each and every cell of your body settling like the sand in a sand timer. And my yogis, you're welcome to continue in your Shavasana. Stay here, turn off this device. Start to deepen your breath. Allow the breath to be a balm to your insides. Toes are wiggling. Fingers, wrists, ankles coming back alive. As you're ready, draw your knees into your chest. Take your time to roll to one side, pressing to seated. Keep your eyes closed, not too worried if you're a little off to the left or right. Let's place our hands back over the heart. The way we started this practice was in connection to our true, truest and deepest desires for liberation of ourselves, which inevitably involves the liberation of all beings everywhere. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be absolutely free. May your loving nature be free from all suffering. May all beings everywhere be happy, healthy, free, and may they be free from all suffering. This is our yoga.
taking in a breath. You can exhale, let out a big sigh if you'd like, or just bow down as you wish, opening your eyes when you're ready. And I thank you so, so much for joining me for practice today. So, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you guys. So definitely, um, uh, it would be lovely to to see the donations roll in for the Heal Food Alliance, H-E-A-L. And um, there are also a number of postings. I'll try to post something on social media. I'm not always particularly skilled at the timing, but I'll try to post something today. So many great organizations that you can support in honor of Juneteenth. And um, come follow me, Yoga Anatomy Academy or Dr. Foster on Instagram. And please definitely uh, join um, or try out one of my yoga classes during the week. <laughs> and you can find all that information at yogaanatomyacademy.com. Everybody here named Ariel Foster got the, got the invitation that way <laughs> through that group. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me check the chat. Let's see what's coming in. Oh, all the thank yous. Thank you all for being here. Heal Food Alliance is awesome. Anybody joining? Oh, Janet, I can't hear you. Oh, I don't know why. That's oh, okay. I was just saying thank you. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed the rest of your weekend. It was a wonderful class. I appreciate it. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Janet. Thanks for being here so much. Yay, Angela, thank you. Any more questions about posterior chain, let me know. And every Friday, my hips class covers some of these same movements, not exactly the same. For example, yesterday's class, I purposefully tried to make different from today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sam, are you still there? Yay. Yeah, I was just going to say thank you so much. It was such an amazing class. And oh. I, I, I was going to just give a shout out to Marie Bell, who's teaching next Saturday. Yeah, no, great idea. Everyone that wants to come. Oh, your audio is breaking up. Can you hear me? Now I can. Okay, yeah, um, same time next week. It should be another amazing class. So yeah, that's Marie's class next week. We hope to see everyone back and thank you for everyone that joined for the first time this weekend. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Um, Angela is asking, is there a possibility to listen to the recording again? Is this gonna go on YouTube? I believe it, yes, it was recorded. So it should be going up on YouTube. I'm gonna talk to Kira about that, but it will be up probably this weekend, yes. So I tried to post to the Cure Grace um, Instagram mm -hmm. and it got busted. It said it paused for some reason. I looked up halfway during class and I was like, that screen's black. Weird. Um, I think it recorded on my end. I think we oh. may have it recording. It probably got part of it. So yeah. you so Angela, you'll be able to see part of it on the on the IG live. Sorry, I, I don't I think it was my iPad. I don't know what it was, why it said pause. I don't use this very much for Instagram, so I don't know. And then, um, and then it hopefully eventually on YouTube, but check out the Cure Grace YouTube channel. I also have a YouTube channel and I have one that's called Posterior Chain Awakening, but it's only like 10 minutes or five minutes. So you can look out there. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you so much. This is a fantastic class. Thanks, I almost gave a peace sign, but then I just real <laughs> I learned this week that this is bad in Ireland, so. <laughs> Time. That's so funny. Good to know. <laughs> In case anybody's here from Ireland, I apologize. 
<laughs> or definitely check out Marie Bell. She's amazing. And thank you guys for sticking out so long. You might be in Shavasana, so I'm going to peace out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone that joined. It was an amazing class. Thank you for joining. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye.